Greetings, YouTubians, and welcome back to Wayne Sharp World, where today we're going to be taking a look at one of the more exciting knives to debut in 2023. And uh, this here is none other than the Kershaw Launch 15. Now, before going any further into this review, I'd like to thank you guys for tuning in today. If you like what you see, please do me a huge favor. Hit that subscribe button, follow along, and I will continue to bring you the content. Now, let's take a look at some overall specs on this new knife right here. We have an overall length of 8.25 inches, a blade length coming in at 3.75 inches, and a blade thickness at 120 thousandths. Blade material on this is what everyone's raving about. It's what we want to see more of. Magna Cut. First Kershaw to feature Magna Cut. Uh, we have a drop point style blade that some may argue is some type of a dagger, but I think due to the grind lines and everything, I, I, I do think it would classify as a drop point, at least in my book. We have a flat grind with a handle length coming in at 4.75 inches, a handle width at 1.25 inches. Keep in mind, that's that's up here at the widest point, so you're looking more at, at probably an inch or maybe even just under an inch around the mid portion of the handle. Uh, we have a handle thickness of 484 thousandths with a handle material of aluminum with micarta inlays. And uh, micarta somewhere else that we'll talk about here in just a second. We have, of course, that uh, button lock automatic locking mechanism with a user of a right or left hand tip up carry. A weight of a very light 3.01 3 ounces. Three ounces. Uh, very impressive for a knife of this size. And the price is equally as impressive, if not more impressive. USA made, Magna Cut, 150 bucks. Yep, zero issue there. No issue at all, $150, good to go. Thank you, Kershaw. Now, let's take a look at some size comparisons here on this guy, because this, this is kind of a big boy. Uh, let's bring out the Paramilitary 2. And let's also go with the Kaiser Beglider. Let's move that military two up. It is it's intruding on the space of, of the launch 15. And we can't have that. Uh, but there we go. As you can see, pretty close with those guys. Uh, we'll pull the bed glider out of here. We'll throw in one more folder. This is the Civivi Brazen. And uh, as you can see, a little longer than all these. Um, but I think it gives you guys a, uh, a good size of just what we're looking at here. Oh, and while I have it here, let's bring this guy into the mix because this is uh, actually a really good comparison. Uh, this is one of my newest additions to my PC. This is the ProTech Godfather, um, the bigger of the two between the Godson and the Godfather. And of course, uh, this is just a little bigger, maybe by, uh, I would probably say, eh, more than I think. Yeah, close to an inch, actually. Significantly bigger. Uh, a lot of that is in the handle. If you line them up closer to where the handle starts and stops, um, you go, oh, never mind. I take that back. The handles are actually the same. The blade length's the difference. There you go. Um, but there's your size comparisons. I think that did a good job of just what they're supposed to do for you. And now let's talk about this knife because it is a very, I feel like this is Kershaw saying like, hey, we're going to do something this year and we want your attention. Well, Kershaw, you got it. This is one of a handful of models I'm really excited to get in hand. And I got to say, I was at SHOT Show earlier this year. Um, I handled a lot of new models from Kershaw. And while they didn't all have the exact, uh, the desirable blade steels I was hoping for, um, the action was very, very impressive on some of their crossbar locks. Uh, but let's stick on this one right here. Let's talk about this blade. Um, I really like this blade. I, I, I like the, the, the proportion of the width of the blade to the handle. Um, I like the grind lines on the blade. Um, I kind of have mixed feelings about this black stone wash they do. It's a very rough stone wash. I mean, it's not rough on the finish. The, the, the finish is very smooth on the blade, but it has like some like next level cracking, which is a crackling effect to where I, I don't know how much I like it, but it, you know, it, it is what it is. I mean, everyone, that's very, very subjective opinion there. Um, but it does have some good grind lines and I like how it's not all perfectly symmetri symmetrical. Um, if you didn't have the grind lines, it would basically look like a dagger, but because of the grind lines, because of the swedge and the grind here, it, it just, it, it looks different and it looks unique and I really like that. And I think it still stays very much in line with, uh, previous Kershaw models. So it's, a, you know, it stays within their design language. You know, it's a Kershaw when you see it. And of course you always see that signifying the in-house design. Um, so yeah. Pretty good stuff there. And of course, Magna Cut, 
We all love to see it. I'll be very honest with you guys. I don't know what the heat treat is on this guy. I probably should have looked that up before I did this review. Um, I'll try and find that, maybe put it in the notes of this video. Um, but regardless, Magna Cut, Micarta, Lunum, American Made, 150 bucks. Yeah, there's a lot of good stuff going on here. Um, but I really like the jimping back here on the blade as well. Uh, it gives you a really good place to rest your thumb. And Kershaw's jimping is very nice. Um, I don't have a lot of Kershaw's in my collection. I have a couple. Um, but they do have very nice jipping and they do pretty good stuff on some things. It really depends kind of where the Kershaw's coming from. They have some Chinese models, they have some American models. Um, and sometimes I've found the quality to not be super consistent between the two areas. I, I have found the American made models to be very consistent. I've had very few issues with American made Kershaw's. I think they do a great job of American manufacturing. Um, and I've always been a fan of a lot of the previous American made models. Uh, going into the, oh, the edge here. What do we got here? I think I got the edge reading. Yeah, 22,000 behind the edge. And this was actually, you know, obviously not razor thin, but they did a really good job of honing this edge. This was a smooth edge. No burrs, no, no nothing catching the, the uh, paper or anything as I was doing some cut tests. Uh, nice smooth edge on this guy. Good to go for EDC. And uh, going into the handle here, I, I, I like this. There's one part of the handle that doesn't exactly quite do it for me. Um, but I want to start with these micarta inlays, which are very nice. They did a very good job for something that they don't do a lot of. Uh, they did a really excellent job here of getting the inlays in clean with not a lot of crap hanging on the outside or, you know, adhesive moving out or fuzzies from micarta. It's just very clean and a really, really good job for one of the first times that I've seen Kershaw do this. I don't ever remember seeing him do micarta inlays. So nice, impressive job there. The one part of the handle that I really don't like is these kind of like stiletto inspired finger guards up here. They're just kind of at awkward spots to where they're not hot spots, but like I want to put my thumb right here. This is where I want to put my thumb, but because of this, I kind of have to scooch up a little and go here. And, and that's not that big of a deal. It's not the end of the world. I think it would just look even better without these. Maybe, you know, keep them clean just like this. And, uh, you know, put some jimping where these would be or something else to really help get that grip going to where, you know, you, what am I doing here? Hit my tripod. Um, just kind of, yeah, to keep, keep everything a little more streamlined and not have to have something like this right where your index or thumb would be. So yeah, it's, it's not ideal, but it's not a, it's not a deal breaker for me. And some people too, depending on your hand size, it may not be an issue at all for you. So that's just me, but I think I would rather not see them there and just have one nice, yeah, that would look sweet. Um, but the pocket clip, I like this pocket clip. Um, I like the fact that even though they did brand it, they kept it all black. So that always looks really good to me. And it's small. It's a very small clip on this. And I want to see more of that. Now, this could give you issues if you have thick chems. I surprisingly, to my shock, actually, I thought for sure this was going to catch on my pocket, my, my jean pocket. It didn't. It didn't. Now, I do wear the, the jeans I had at that point, I think, were Levi's. So, they're, you know, I feel like Levi's has kind of thinner pocket hems. But if you have thicker hems, that, that could be an issue. It wasn't for me, for me but it could be for you. Um, but I like how the clip feels in hand. You know, it, it, it's kind of a taller clip or a higher clip in terms of the base of the handle up. But it doesn't, you don't really feel it in hand that much. Because when I hold this in hand, you know, I'm doing kind of this number here to where a lot of the part of the clip that's sticking up is just below my hand. So I don't really feel it pressing down as to where if I was holding it like this and like really choked back, I would feel a little more of the top of the clip in my hand that may not be great. But as is, I don't really have any complaints. I think it feels really good and uh, I do enjoy this a whole lot. There's a lot about this knife that um, I like the way it looked in general. When I handled it at SHOT Show, I was like, okay, this is good. You know, I'm, I'm excited to get this on the table and really, you know, get more familiar with it. And the longer I've had this, the more I've really come to enjoy it. Another thing that I really enjoy back here is this micarta backspacer. And this is something that could have went very wrong. This is, this is, this was a risk. This was another risk that Kershaw took because I feel like this could have been a disaster. I feel like it could have looked like absolute dog crap but it looks really good. There's very little fraying or fuzzies or anything. Um, it's a nice little contrast from the black. And I mean, who doesn't like OD Green and black? I mean, that's a really good combination. Uh, so yeah, that, that came out really, really well. I was very happy to see that. And these inlays are gonna look even better with a little mineral oil on it to bring out the color, darken them up a little. 
This is a good knife, guys. This is a good knife. Uh, the action on this, very nice action. It, it's it, it's not the same action as like my Protect Godfather you saw, but it's snappy. It kicks well. Um, it's very good. It's very good. It's it, it, it's not disappointing. That's when it comes to the launch series. It, I don't expect it to feel just like Protect. I will say there's been some of the smaller models. I think do kick just like Protect. The bigger ones is where you kind of notice it. it. It's not quite as hard of a snap, but it's still a good, satisfying deployment. So I have no issue with it. Um, at the end of the day, guys, this is a very nice knife. And if you want to spend a little more and get some Magnica and get some American made. Uh, an automatic like this, this this is a very good route to go. Um, I have no reason to say don't, and a lot of reasons to say yes, I would recommend this. And I would. I think it's a great knife, um, and I'm really excited to see what Kershaw brings out for the rest of the year. I think they could have a very good year this year. So that's it, guys. That's the Launch 15. Let me know what you think of that. I really hope you enjoyed this one. Hope you have a great rest of your day, and until the next one, I'm out.